we we'll talk about satellites today we we'll see the history how satellites work satellites frequency band and the antennas the orbit distance the pros and cons and the application at each orbit the types of uh, satellites we categorize them into leo that is low earth orbit then the medium earth orbit and then the gps global positioning system and finally the geostationary or geos so leo meo and geo are the main categorization because gps is now very popular that is why when more categorization is there so the first satellites history the theory of satellite was simple enough shoot something into the space at the right speed and on the correct trajectory and it will stay up orbiting earth for years if not forever if the orbit is the right distance in space the satellite will keep pace with the rotation of the earth okay because earth also revolves around its uh, axis so the pioneer satellites in 1957 early in october 1957 communication stations started picking up a regular beeping noise coming from space the signals were coming from russia's sputnik 1 the world's first man made satellite then american were were not late next year january 1958 before a jupiter rocket successfully launched explorer 1 the first american satellite then nasa's syncom program 1963 geos so in july 1963 the huge Aircraft Cor- Corporation launched the experimental Syncom One for NASA, the world's first geosynchronous communication satellite. The earlier system, that is Sister Syncom Syncom One, you know that is why we call it as Syncom program because it was Syncom One had been blown up on launch earlier that year, but the second version was a success. It carried the first uh, live two-way satellite call between heads of a state and President. Kennedy in Washington DC telephoned Nigerian Prime Minister uh, Mr Balewa in Africa the third synchron satellite transmitted live television coverage of the 1964 Olympic games from Tokyo early about 1965 the world first commercial communication satellite was early bird built for the communication satellite corporation comsat again by huges This was the first commercial communication satellite. The satellite was launched on April 6, 1965, and placed in commercial service after moving into geosynchronous orbit, that is, 36,000 km above the equator. That meant it was always on station to provide line of sight communication between Europe and North America. Early bird, this early bird, have a battery and worked only when its solar panels were exposed to the sun. then come the later communication satellite that is the launch of intelsat 3 satellites in 1969 created a global tv and speech communication network that spanned in atlantic pacific and indian oceans the introduction of the multi beam antennas in 1980s brought a new improvement in the efficiency as the satellite power could now be concentrated on a small region of the earth small region of the earth this region so making possible small smaller aperture that is coverage area and of course the ground stations were low cost so the capacity grew as well that is the number of simultaneous television and speech channels which are carried so how exactly satellite work the earth station sends message in gigahertz range that is we call it as uplink the satellite receive and retransmit the signal back this is called as downlink and earth other earth station they receive message in useful strength area which is called the footprint as you can see here this is the satellite now this is as you can say a part of uh, earth surface so we have a earth station which is uplinking something now this is a downlink earth station which is downlinking downlinking something this is one more earth station so this is the footprint of footprint of the satellite so even even this satellite is going to is capable 
of uh, say uplinking and downlinking around this many miles now the dishes that is the satellite frequency bands and antennas the size of satellite dishes you will see in this form which are called the antennas are related to the transmission frequency there is an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength we you know c is equal to nu lambda okay frequency and wavelength they are inversely proportional so as wavelength increases as it grew the frequency would decrease the larger the antenna you know you, la you need large antennas these are necessary to gather the signal so the wavelength increases the frequency decreases you need larger satellite dishes so this is the satellite frequency bands and antenna we were talking c band ku band so most commonly used bands are c band that is 4 to 8 gigahertz and ku band which is 11 to 17 gigahertz and then ka band so c ku and ka these are the commonly used bands so this is the leo that is low earth orbit the distance from the surface of the earth can be as, uh, computed as 600 to 1000 km so the satellites which are rounding between 600 to 1000 km they are termed as low earth orbit the altitude is 600 to say 1600 also and uh, the revolution time is 90 minutes that is around 3 hours uh 1.5 hours to 3 hours it depends on the distance because distance is also varying no so if uh, the distance is higher then time will be time taken will be higher uh, the closer it will be the faster it will go so the advantages is it re reduces the transmission delay because the distance is very less and eliminates need for bulky receiving equipment it you know small uh, antennas will also do but the problem is the smallest coverage area because the, it is at this distance so coverage area can be like this only and shorter life span uh, say 5 to 8 years if we compare it with the geos it is around 10 years so we also have subdivisions on leo that is little big and mega leos super leos what are the applications of leo 0.8 gigahertz range small low cost vehicle tracking environmental modeling monitoring two way data communication used for short and narrow band narrow band communications what about the big leo applications which is you know small was 0.8 gigahertz this is 2 gigahertz 2 gigahertz or above range so this can offer global services which can be subject to regulatory requirements and this is used for technology devices such as high speed high bandwidth data communications and video conferencing as you can see in example here and they carry voice and high speed data services also the main uses are data communications and real time voice delivery to the hand held devices then we also have mega or super leo applications this is from 20 to 30 gigahertz so we started with point i 8 came to 2 and then to 20 to 30 mainly handles the broadband data broadband data so these systems are optimized for packet switched data rather than the voice so they share the same advantage and drawbacks of leos and are intended to operate within the inter satellite links to minimize the transmission times and avoid the dropping signals space debris all these are satellites and this is the debris once the satellite is out of action it will add up to the debris So according to US Space Command there are more than 8000 objects larger than the softball now circling the globe and of these 2000 are satellite whether they are working or not then we come to the MEO that is middle earth orbiting MEO which is from 8000 to 20000 km above the earth and you know you can have variation variation in various books you see 9000 to 15000 km This is the median Earth orbit, and the average distance to Moon is this much. So these orbits are primarily reserved for communication satellite that cover the North and South Pole. 
like this. So unlike the circular orbit of the geostationary satellite, like this, mules are placed in an elliptical or oval shaped orbit. This is an oval shaped orbit. So approximately a dozen median Earth orbiting satellites are necessary, that is near to 12, to provide continuous global coverage 24 hours a day. Now we come to geo, geo synchronous Earth orbit. Geosynchronous, as you see, these, these were the polar satellites. We have geostationary here, which is at the equator, always seemingly stationary to the Earth, because Earth also revolves around the um, its axis, that is 24 hours it takes, and the same time this stage, this uh, satellite takes. So, orbit is synchronous with the Earth rotation, that is why called as geosynchronous, and from the ground, the satellite is up appears fixed, though they both are moving. Earth is also moving and the satellite is also moving, but it still appears to be fixed. The altitude is around 36,000 km. The coverage 40% of the planet per satellite. This is huge. So, the geos, geostationary satellites, they are commonly used for communications and weather observation. Communication and weather observation. So, the typical service life expectancy of geos are 10 to 15 years. And since these geostationary satellites, they circle the earth at this equator, they are not able to provide the coverage of the northmost because they are moving like this. What about these areas? Northmost and southmost altitudes. So the geos and weather, the altitude is chosen so that it takes the satellite 24 hours to orbit the earth once, which is also the rotation rate of the earth as we discussed earlier. This produces the cloud animations, see you on TV. So this can take images approximately every minute. What are the facts about geos? Instruments on geos are designed to last from 3 to 9 years. And measurements that are taken are in the form of electrical voltages that are digitized and then transmitted to receiving stations on the ground. So instruments we usually have. First small telescope or antenna, a scanning mechanism and one or more detectors that may detect the visible infrared or microwave radiation. The advantage and disadvantage of geos. Advantage first of all, weather images can be displayed, television broadcast are interrupted and this is used to track major developments such as hurricane 24 hours a day, round o'clock. What are the disadvantages? Because the distance is 36k, so it takes longer for the signal to get to the earth and back to the satellite, so there is a delay. An increased difficulty of telephone conversation. Geos are not positioned in the farthest northern and southern orbit, so polar um, coverage is not there. So this is about satellites. We have known about the history and uh, the various categorization of satellites. Thank you so much. Take care.